Dollar Cost Averaging DCA Investing, meaning an efficacy of strategy. Dollar Cost Averaging is a popular investment strategy that usually gets even more popular in environments like this, where all-time market highs and political uncertainty have people worried that the next big stock market crash could be just around the corner. And while Dollar Cost Averaging can absolutely be a good way to ease yourself into the market, it's a strategy whose benefits are often oversold and misunderstood. What is Dollar Cost Averaging? How does it work? What's the rationale behind it? Keep watching to find out. But before we go too far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the future episodes about dollar cost averaging and investing in general. What is Dollar Cost Averaging DCA? Dollar Cost Averaging DCA is an investment strategy in which an investor divides up the total amount to be invested across periodic purchases of a target asset in an effort to reduce the impact of volatility on the overall purchase. The purchases occur regardless of the asset's price and at regular intervals. In effect, this strategy removes much of the detailed work of attempting to time the market in order to make purchases of equities at the best prices. Dollar Cost Averaging is also known as the Constant Dollar Plan. How does Dollar Cost Averaging work? To get a better understanding of how dollar cost averaging works, we'll work through a hypothetical example. Say that you invest $100 per month into an index fund for 5 months. As share prices vary at each interval, you receive a different amount of shares each time when you invest $100. After making monthly contributions of equal amounts, your total investment after 5 months is $500. With 135 shares at the end of the period, the investment value is $878. Therefore, you would have profited $378. It's important to highlight the average price per share compared to the average price per share you end up paying. In this case, the average share price at the end of the 5 months was $4.50. 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6 plus 6.5 divided by 5. However, the average price you paid per share was significantly lower at $3.70. $500 divided by 135 shares. Of course, it's not to say that utilizing this strategy will always result in a profit, nor it's to say that it will protect investors from falling share prices. Dollar cost averaging can also be used in mutual or index fund accounts. Although it's one of the more basic techniques, dollar cost averaging is still one of the best strategies for beginning investors looking to trade ETFs. Additionally, many dividend reinvestment plans allow investors to dollar cost average by making contributions regularly. The logic behind dollar cost averaging 1. Risk reduction Dollar cost averaging reduces investment risk and capital is preserved to avoid a market crash. It preserves money, which provides liquidity and flexibility in managing an investment portfolio. DCA avoids the disadvantage of lump sum investing through the purchase of a security when its price is artificially inflated due to market sentiment, which results in the purchase of a lower than required quantity of a security. When the security price discovers its intrinsic price through a market correction or the bubble burst, an investor's portfolio will decline. Some downturns are prolonged, further diminishing portfolio net worth. Using DCA ensures minimum loss and possibly high returns. DCA can reduce regret feelings through its provision of short-term downside protection against a swift deterioration in a security price. A declining market is often viewed as a buying opportunity. Hence, DCA can significantly boost long-term portfolio return potential when the market starts to rise. 2. Consistent investing boosts returns with dividends and compounding. Buying market securities when prices are declining ensures that an investor earns higher returns. Using the DCA strategy ensures that you buy more securities than if you had purchased when prices were high. 3. Ride out market downturns. Using the DCA strategy by investing periodic smaller amounts in declining markets assists in riding out market downturns. The portfolio using DCA can keep a healthy balance and leave the upside potential to increase portfolio value in the long term. 4. Disciplined saving. The strategy of adding money regularly to an investment account allows disciplined saving, as the portfolio balance increases even when its present assets are depreciating. However, a prolonged market decline can be detrimental to the portfolio. 5. Prevents bad timing. Market timing is not a pure science that many investors, even professional ones, can master. Investing a lump sum at the wrong time can be risky, which can adversely affect a portfolio's value significantly. It's difficult to predict market swings, hence the dollar cost averaging strategy will provide a smoothening of the cost of purchase, which can benefit the investor. 6. Manage Emotional Investing The phenomenon of emotional investing brought about by various factors such as making a huge lump sum investment and loss aversion is not unusual in behavioral theory. The use of dollar cost averaging DCA, eliminates or reduces emotional investing. A disciplined buying strategy through DCA makes the investor focus their energy on the task at hand and eliminates news and information hype from various media about the stock market's short-term performance and direction. 
The alternative, buy the dip. An opposing strategy to dollar cost averaging is to time the market. Timing the market is an investment strategy whereby investors attempt to beat the stock market by predicting its performance. It's an active strategy that focuses on the short term and requires close attention and monitoring of the market. Some investors choose this approach because if they get their timing right, they can generate above average returns. However, perfectly predicting the markets continuously is impossible. Dollar cost averaging, on the other hand, is a passive investment strategy. This strategy does not require as much attention to the market as you make investments of the same amount of money on a regular basis. Also, rather than entering and exiting different positions, you build a position in a stock, bond or fund. Buying the dip in bull versus bear markets Bull and bear markets often coincide with the economic cycle, consisting of four phases – expansion, peak, contraction and trough. The factor that determines whether the market is bull or bear is how the economy changes from time to time. In a bull market, corporate earnings increase and the economy grows as consumers tend to spend more due to the wealth effect. Trading and IPO activity also increases during the bull run. On the opposite, in a bear market, consumers tend to set stricter priorities and reduce their spending, leading to lower sales and a fall in business profits. This, in turn, affects the way the market values stock and leads to a negative impact on GDP. Whether a market is bullish or bearish depends not just on the market's knee-jerk reaction to a particular event, but how it's performing over the long term. In other words, small movements represent only a short-term trend or a market correction, and it's a longer time period that would actually determine the nature of the market. Should you dollar cost average? With all of that background, the big question is this. Should you dollar cost average or invest all your money at once? The most important thing by far is to save money and stay invested for the long term. If dollar cost averaging helps you to do that with less anxiety, then go for it. From a purely analytical standpoint, it's typically more efficient to invest all your money at once into an appropriate asset allocation. If pure rationality is what gets you going, that may be the better approach. On the benefit side, it's possible to achieve a lower dollar cost average for a security over time rather than a lump sum investment, provided there are declining markets that do not become protracted. An investor should aim to include DCA as an optional strategy, among other bolder strategies such as target asset allocation, diversification and regular portfolio rebalancing. That's it for this episode. Please give us your feedback in the comment section below. To watch more episodes on financial topics like this, hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to support us even more, buy us a coffee from the link in the description. Good luck and see you in the next episode.